Hi, and welcome back to Turning Point School of Art. I'm Professor Sarah Perk. In part one, we looked at how portraits through photography had become really popular. Let's now take a short look at how artists have used the idea of portraits to document people, places, and time. Documentary photography is all about using the images to say something. Often, but not always, this is presented as a series of work on a particular topic. This type of work can refer to big events or historical moments, but what I find really interesting is how you can look at everyday people and try to capture something that somehow feels real. Robert Frank was a Swiss photographer traveling the world and working for magazines such as Harper's Bazaar. In the 1950s, he relocated to the United States of America, a place that he initially thought was exciting and optimistic. Starting in 1955, he set off to document every corner of the country and produced a book called The Americans. It's clear from these images that his view was no longer naively optimistic and you can feel the darkness of the American dream slowly fizzing and bubbling underneath. The idea of the frame becomes almost as important as his subject. The book wasn't an instant classic, however. Some reviews called it blurry and sloppy, which shows you not to give up. These photographs are now perhaps the most celebrated of the 21st century. His mum asked him why he always took pictures of poor people. He says, it wasn't true, but my sympathies were with the people who struggled. There was also my mistrust of people who made the rules. Also working around the same time, Vivian Mayer was a nanny who was taking snapshots of the street. The results are amazing, creating a sort of huge documentary of everyday life in America for over 50 years. Whilst the children in her care were used to her carrying a camera around, they had no real idea what she was doing, and Vivian actually never shared any of her work or tried to sell any of it. A local history enthusiast bought a box of them, and when he realized just how good they were, he tried to track her down, only to find that she had died, aged 84, just a few days before. She left over 100,000 negatives. These images are sometimes playful, often charming. Most people were just not aware of her camera, but Vivian was always respectful and discreet. Her images have found a new resonance and meaning in the last few years, perhaps because of her story and the idea that such a gifted artist would refuse to show their work or share it with anybody. The camera can only take pictures of what you point it at, so it's controlled by the artist or photographer. And many have used this purposely to talk about what's happening. What appears personal could also be political. Nan Golden is another well-known American photographer whose snapshots of friends were initially created to make slideshows to entertain each other. If Robert Frank started this idea of the snapshot of being spontaneous with images, artists like Nan Golden took it and ran. Nan gave images and voices to communities not previously seen, and whilst now the style looks familiar, everyone takes photos of their friends at gatherings for social media, it was absolutely radical at the time. Nan has also done portrait series of children, and she's talked of how she believes children to have a special alien wisdom that they lose as they become adults. Working in the UK in the 1970s and 80s, Joe Spence was a commercial photographer, portraits, weddings, who moved into art taking pictures of the experiences of women and challenging mainstream media images. She called herself a cultural sniper, as much as an activist as an artist, and her work was often shown in libraries and community settings, only recently more likely found in a gallery and in collections. She also pioneered new ideas of phototherapy, often as a collaborative practice. Sunil Gupta did the more traditional route to becoming an artist by studying at the RCA, also in the 1980s in Britain, he created a staged photography documentary series that directly critiqued the politics of the time when the representation of gay relationships was banned. For another series, he revisits the Pre-Raphaelites, who I mentioned last time, commissioned for a series on human rights issues. He replaces the Pre-Raphaelite idea of truth in nature to one that questions the very truth of society today. Earlier this year, he revisited a series that he made in New York in the 1970s through a collaboration with fashion designer Helmut Lang. 
who in turn was inspired by Sunil's original photographs. Sunil talks about how he applied his work to fashion. I just tried to give it some emotional weight to show that there was something maybe happening. So documenting through photography can mean many things to many people. And what connects these examples is an interest in real people and real lives, whether or not the images are taken secretly or entirely constructed and posed. In some way, they all predict the current interest in seeing other people's daily lives on Instagram. What's interesting is whether you want to just make or look at photos is to always remember that someone has chosen that image, framing it, creating it. What it's actually saying, however, is for you to decide.